So we know that the calories in and versus calories out equation can be inconsistent at both ends. So it's impossible to measure exactly how much you're burning or you're taking in, absorbing. What are some variables that would determine why you might not be absorbing all the calories you're consuming or why you are, yeah, why you're not really? Okay. So first we'll, we'll talk, you actually can measure calories out um, if you lived in a direct calorimeter, which you'd basically have to live 24 hours a day in a room that's designed to measure your body heat. Um, there's indirect calorimetry too, which basically measures the difference between your oxygen coming in and your carbon dioxide going out, but who's gonna walk around wearing a machine like that all day? So we can't actually measure it, it's just not practical for people, Here right? You there you go. <laughs> so, but the, the, the difference is, could be a number of things. A, how well trained someone is, what their muscle fiber makeup is. Someone who, let's say someone who's a triathlete and does mainly aerobic conditioning is going to burn different amounts of calories than somebody who does Olympic weightlifting, even if they're the same size. Mm -hmm. and, and then you, you have the issue of what macronutrients are you burning because there's tons more energy in uh, fat, obviously, than in carbohydrates. So depending on what your body's preferentially burning and in things like where your hormones are, such as where your insulin and glucagon balance and things like that, you could be... Um, God, one person could be 1,800 calories a day, the other person could be 3,000. And we've even experienced the last, the last year and a half on the road where there were times where I was eating 16, 1,800 calories and I was 250 pounds and you were eating 2,400 to 3,000 and you were maintaining, you know, 100 and, what, 112, 116 pounds. So oh, it's, there's a lot that goes to it. You, you have that type of thing, activity, the type of fuel you're burning, but you also have things like um, nutrient deficiencies. If you're deficient in B1, B2, B3, zinc, copper, manganese, B5, there's a lot of things that can, that can affect it. Heavy metals can affect it. Mm -hmm. um, food quality can affect it. Mm -hmm. You know, to meal timing, if yep. it's around a workout or if it's, you know, middle of the night, yep. all of that stuff. Yep. And what it. about um, gut health? Gut health is incredibly yeah. important because, and that, I think that's one of the things that allowed me to go the last year and a half eating about half of what I really needed and maintaining my, my 250 pounds is because we're big on hydrochloric acid and digestion and yep. digestive enzymes and bile acids and probiotics and things like that. So when you have really good gut health, uh, you're able to pull out more nutrition yep. and pull out more of that energy from your food. Whereas once, if somebody has bubble guts, um, that food might go all the way through them and they're not actually able to unlock what's in there. Yeah, and it's yeah. a really big component. So someone could be eating five meals a day of the most nutritious stuff, but they might not be getting as nearly as much out of it as they think they are. Right, yeah. exactly.